Hello and welcome to World Science Festival Brisbane 2022, igniting the magic of chemistry. I'm Bernie Hobbs and I could not be more thrilled to be here with you this morning to really get to the nuts and bolts of chemistry, to look at atoms and molecules. More importantly, the hint was in the title, igniting. Uh, we'll be blowing stuff up. There will be flames. There will be massive explosions and, uh, and magic. There will be magic or will there? Will it just be chemistry? Um, as as you see here with me, I've got three people who are going to do all the real magic and chemistry in this show. They are, as you can tell by look at them, scientists. I mean, look, they completely fit the picture. They're old white men with grey hair. So this is what scientists look like. Here are our chemists, Dr Michael. Hello. Dr... Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's so astonishing. He blanked my mind for a moment. That's the power of chemistry. And Dr. Frederica. Dr. For a day. She's still doing her PhD. So, no, today uh, I'm doctor. Yeah, she, <laughs> totally doctor for a day. Dr. Frederica, Dr. Michael and Dr. Oh my God, what have you done with your name? Nathan. Dr. Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> Dr. Nathan. So we're just going to be having a great amount of fun today looking at, at atoms and molecules and all the different types of chemical bonding. Um, but before we get started, I do want to say a special thanks and acknowledge the traditional owners of the country that the World Science Festival is being held on this year and every year. Pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and really acknowledge the close ties that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continue to enjoy and experience experience with our land as they were the first scientists in our country. Um, I also want to give a shout out to everyone at home. You can shout back but we can't hear you. Uh, but I hope you're shouting there. And I also want to shout out, it's so great. I know we're all disappointed we can't be here in person. There's nothing more fun than a live show. But I tell you, once you see what's going on here today, you will love it almost as much. And next year we'll all be together again as well as school students from around Australia. We've also got some students from the Shanghai Experimental School in China. So, so hi to everyone in China. Ni hao. <laughs> hey, and uh, we really hope you enjoy the show. I'm sure you're about to. Um, they are looking a bit more like chemists now. They've put on their special work gear and safety goggles. And I'm just going to hand over to, I really do your no know your name, Dr Nathan, who's going to kick us off. Over to you, Dr Nathan. Thanks, Dr. Bernie. Oh, I'm definitely not a doctor. Okay. Uh, <laughs> doctor for a day. So we'll start off a chemical reaction here. So hopefully today we're going to show you a bit of the magic and power of chemistry and some of the really strange things that can happen. Now, the really great thing about chemistry is we can take things that uh, look like everyday items and we can change the way that they look. And so here I've just taken a few solutions and mixed them together. It looks so like all, pineapple juice. It kind of so. looks like pineapple juice at the moment, doesn't it? So um, it started as just three car colourless solutions that I've mixed together, but hopefully using the power of chemistry, something quite astounding will happen. Now, the key to chemistry is that it's everything that's around us, right? It's all the, all the things that we can see, touch, smell, Ooh. taste, <laughs> all happens because of the magic of chemistry just like that. Uh, it no longer looks like pineapple juice. No longer Nathan. looks like pineapple juice, does it? Dr. Hang on a minute. <laughs> now it's gone back to pineapple juice. And hopefully we go back to the nice blue colour. Wow. So this is chemistry happening right before your eyes. And this is the beauty of chemistry, is that everything we can see and touch around us is made up um, of, of atoms. And as chemists, we can try and control those atoms. Okay? Um, so we think about what an atom looks like. Uh, we've got a nice little slide showing what an atom usually looks like. And you might be used to seeing the picture on the right. Uh, you've got a nice on, nucleus. On the left, Dr. Nathan. On the left. <laughs> Um, He's smart with... in lots of ways, just don't get him to give you directions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got our picture of the balls um, in the nucleus, yep. um, which are purple and green. These are our protons and our neutrons. And then we've got our orange electrons flying around the outside. And we've seen this before, haven't we? Yeah, Dr. totally. Right? That's the classic. Kind of looks like um, planets orbiting the sun in our solar system. Now, Unfortunately, this isn't really what atoms look like. They're actually much, much weirder than that. And the beauty of weird things is that they can, uh, they can do weird and strange phenomena. So actually, when we think about an atom, it looks a lot more like what we see on um, the other side, which is these big, giant yellow clouds or what we call electron shells. And so instead of saying that the uh, electron's flying around in an orbit, we actually say that each electron sits inside of one of those unusual clouds. Now, the weird thing is, is we don't ever know exactly where that electron is. It's just somewhere inside one of those volumes. Yeah. 
Um, so that's where the things start getting weird because electrons can do unstrange stuff. They are tricky circuits. They are tricky. Now, the other interesting thing about these shells, you see that they're different sizes uh -huh. and different shapes. So each of those different sizes and different shapes are electrons of different amounts of energy. Mm. So what we want to do is look at electrons having different amounts of energy. And I think Dr. Federer is going to show you that. All right, Dr. Yeah. Federica, I don't want to I can out. show you something. Yeah, I want to see it. Absolutely. So we have a lot of different kind of atoms, right? And every atom is different from each other and they have very specific numbers of protons, <laughs> neutrons and electrons, yeah. right? But how do we know what atoms are in our substances? There's one way to find out yeah. that we chemists like a lot. I have to say to that's good because most chemicals tend to look like jars of colourless liquid. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm glad you've I mean, got an easy way to find like out. This looks like water you would drink, yeah, right? I'm not I wouldn't drink to, that. No. <laughs> <laughs> if it's in a beaker, I'm not drinking it. But you can burn them up. Yes. All and right. once you burn them up, you have to pay attention to the colour of the flame. So we might need the lights down to... Oh, wow. Yeah. OK, that is, can you see that bright green colour? Can you see I that over there? Idea. Now I'm going to light them all up. Oh, If we can dim the lights exactly. Thank you. Yeah. So what happens is that when we heat up atoms... Wow. Can you see how I green they are? I can see that serious green yeah. there. Yeah. So it's when we uh, light up atoms... Yeah. All the energy from the heat goes to the electrons and the electrons jump from one level, one shell level, to the next one. Uh -huh. But they cannot stay on that level for much longer. So they have to come down to their original state. And what happens during their jump down is that they release all the energy they got, that they got in the first place in the form of light. So they, they swallow energy as heat yeah. and Can then they see spit it out as light. Right, totally. red and this is green and this is kind of... Uh, bluish, Bluey, exactly. White. Yeah, so and this one's just a dud that, yeah, this it looks one like is, This one gave up. It's the, a quitter. The meal I cooked, yeah, yeah. forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> but why are they different colours? That's because the amount of energy, it's different for every kind of atom, and light and energy are very closely related to each other. Yeah, so it's all, all oh right, and so every time you burn one particular kind of atom, you'll get that same colour. Yes, exactly, because the amount of energy to, for the electron to go down to its original state, it's always the same one. Fantastic. Yeah, so that's why we have all these nice colours. And guess what? These are the exact chemicals that you use to make fireworks. So when you see all those bright colours shining oh, in the sky, yeah. that's what these kind of elements are. Oh, great. So if things don't pan out for you in research, you can make fireworks. I can make fireworks. Oh, that would be great, <laughs> they were wouldn't great it? <laughs> but why do we keep talking about electrons? Dr. Nathan. So, Bernie, we looked at our structure of our atom at the uh, start of the show. And it did look like balloon animals. It did look like so. balloon. And so you've <laughs> given me a bit of an idea talking about balloon animals to bring out a balloon. So the thing about atoms is that they're so, so tiny that we can't actually see them. Yep. But we know, we can do experiments to know the what the structure of atom, an atom looks like. So if we think about that weird structure of our atom, we've got our nucleus, which is those, are those little balls in the centre. Mm -hmm. And if we were to take one single atom and blow the nucleus up to the size of just this little balloon in my hand, mm. right, what we want to think about is how big is the electron cloud around the outside, the electron shell? OK, well, going by that image there, you would think that the, if the nucleus is this big, then the atom would be that big. But I have to say, I happen to know the atom is a whole lot bigger, and I would say it's even bigger than the studio we're in. It's probably bigger than the building keep we're going, in. Keep going, keep going. Bigger than the block we're keep on. Keep going, keep going. Maybe as big as the suburb yep. we're in. That's about right, right? It's about the same size as a suburb. So if you've been to Brisbane and you know the Brisbane city, it's basically the same size as the city centre or most of the little country towns that people are hopefully watching um, around yeah. the show around Queensland are in. It's probably bigger than your town. So if you think about that, if I hold up this balloon, how much activity is going on inside my balloon? Not very much. Not a lot. But there's lots of things going on around us in the studio, around in the suburb, mm. in the city, all around the outside. <laughs> so you can see there's a, in that large volume, there's a lot more um, space and energy and uh, think for things to happen. And electrons. And, and that's electrons. where the fun happens. That's exactly right. And that's the whole point is that when you bring atoms together, then it's the electrons that actually interact with each other. And that's the real key because we don't usually think about um, atoms yeah. uh, on their own. We want to think about what they do when they come together. Okay. But to understand that, you have to know what electrons can do. And I think Dr. Michael is going to show you some of the power of electrons. All right. Have you got some in your pocket there, Dr. Michael? Or? I do have some in my pocket, but not ones that we can see. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So 
How do we know about that these protons and electrons are really there? I mean, we can't see them with our eyes, can no, we? No, no. They're Ridiculously way too small. small. Yeah. So I think the best thing to do is do some experiments to show that they're there. And you know who the best thing, pe best people to do experiments on are? Do experiments on? Yeah. Um, okay. well, maybe with, sorry. Um, with. I should say with. Uh, volunteers oh. from the audience, for example. <laughs> do we have any wonderful volunteers that would come down now um, oh, right. that we can do some experiments with? With, not on. On, not on with. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, if you, uh, Nathan, you grab, oh, they're out here now. Great. Yep. Okay, I'm going to give you one of these each. Okay, we take that. Okay. So, we want to do some experiments to think about how we can see that positive protons and negative electrons are really there, okay? So let's have a think about positive and negative. If you guys have ever played with magnets before, mm. you'd know that when you put them together, they actually, most of the time, they stick together and it's tricky to pull them apart from each other. But sometimes if you push them together in a certain way, they actually push apart from each other. They repel each other. And protons and electrons do very similar things. So each magnet actually has a positive end and a negative end, or we actually call them in magnets a positive pole and a negative pole. So, guys, if we push two positive poles together, for example, so if you, Lulu, if you flip yours around, there we go, excellent. If we push the two positive poles of two different magnets together, they actually repel each other like that. That's great, guys. <laughs> I, Fantastic. Lulu and Zane, I think you might have played with magnets before because you really knew what was going to happen right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. OK, so if we flip them around and try to push the two negative ends together, they also repel each other too. <laughs> So the positive ends are like two protons, positive protons trying to push together, yeah. and the negative ends are like two negative electrons trying to push together. They both of them, they repel each so other. They so behave, they behave just like magnets. They're not magnets. They're not they, magnets. They behave just the same way, so it's a good way for us to think about to it. To think about it. Sometimes, yeah. to think, sometimes we use these things to help yeah. us think about these things. That's exactly right. But if one of you guys, if Lulu, if you flip yours around and we do a positive end and a negative end together they actually attract each other, of course. All so right. that's when the two magnets are sticking together. So a positive proton and a negative electron attract each other in a similar kind of way. Fantastic. Okay. And you know what's even more amazing than that? Like the, the positive and negative, the, str the strength of the attraction there is even strong enough to get a brother and sister to hang out like this in such a friendly way. And I do not remember that from my childhood. So go the power of the electrons and the protons. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks awesome. so much, Zane and Lulu. And say hi to your friends at home. <laughs> Excellent. OK, awesome. OK, so now, now that we know that about positive and negatives, we can actually do another experiment. Now, this experiment is fantastic because you can do it at your own home mm -hmm. and it actually shows you that the protons and electrons are real yep. and it works with real protons and electrons too. Okay. All right. So we're going to do this experiment today with some other volunteers. If we have some other volunteers. Some other volunteers. Oh, we happen to have Edith and Bronte here. Say hi to everyone at home. Excellent. Now, <laughs> your people at home probably won't mind too much if we turn you guys into science experiments today? Hopefully not. <laughs> okay, great. They're dressed like chemists, <laughs> just like Zane and Lulu. <laughs> exactly. So, it turns out that if you rub a balloon on some on a human, on human hair, like these hair we have here today, exhibit A and exhibit B, <laughs> electrons flow from the hair to the balloon. And what happens then is the electrons, the, the balloon ends up having too many electrons, especially <laughs> that one, apparently. <laughs> and this one too, I can see this hair sticking up too. And the, so the balloon becomes negatively charged. It has too many electrons. And the hair lost all those electrons, so now it has too many protons wow. and it becomes positively charged. So the effect is that the positively charged hair is attracted to the negatively charged balloon and sticks to it like glue. And that is literally because of the real protons and electrons in this experiment that's what makes it stick together. So we, can, we can't see the positive. Wow, that's right over there. You're kidding me. I know. Wow. No, like, I'm glad your hair's no longer. I wouldn't be able to reach it. <laughs> reach all the way to the top. That is Look a at crazy it amount of electrons that have been stolen from your hair. You're not going to suicide you for stealing. Yeah, no. Okay, that's good. <laughs> now, hopefully we don't get the next part of the experiment going because it'd probably go pretty good with that one. But sometimes <laughs> you can have so many electrons in the balloon that they really want to jump back to mix up with the protons. Okay? Right. When that happens, if they really want to do it enough, they'll actually travel or migrate right through the air. And so if you guys have ever touched a shopping trolley or maybe the handle of a car door and had a, like, a little bit of a zap and feel that zap, that's actually that exact thing happening, and it's called static electricity. Should we see if we can get your head to get zapped by the balloon? <laughs> <laughs>
It doesn't work this way. With balloon Tap. hair, they don't oh. like travelling back the other way. It really wants to go one way. And wow. you know what? Scientists don't really understand why they particularly want to go in that particular way. But anyway, um, and finally, another example of a static electricity, if you, if you don't have a balloon at home, is just to look up at the big storm clouds that have been around Brisbane a lot lately, um, and hopefully other places as well, um, and you'll see some lightning strikes, and they are just static electricity, but on a really big scale. Ah, uh, well, thank you very much to our scientists for a day, Edith and Bronte, and we'll see you all again a bit later for another demonstration. But um, I really do apologise for your hair, and I hope one day it comes back to normal. But um, <laughs> for now, it's very happy being a chemist experiment. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks to all our volunteers for now. So positive electrons, positive protons and negative electrons, we've had a bit of a think about those now, but what do they mean for atoms and molecules and the world around us. I think Dr Nathan is going to talk to us a little bit more about that. All right. Thanks, Dr Michael. So we've talked a lot about atoms, uh, Dr Bernie, but it's very <laughs> rare that we actually ever see individual atoms. What we actually see is yourself, you're made up of many atoms connected together in what so we call molecules, mm -hmm. because atoms don't just hang out next to each other. And the key is that we're using the energy that's locked within those electrons, the light that we saw with Dr. Federica, yep. and we're using that energy to hold the atoms together. And this is what we call a chemical bond. And there's lots of different types of chemical bonds, and they all have unique properties and unique ways in which we can sort of change them. And I think Dr. Federica is going to show you the first one. All of right. Those. I will, but I need lots of volunteers oh. for this experiment. <laughs> our volunteers, I hope their hair's been fixed by now. We need okay. all of our volunteers all back over here. Hair are it. awesome. You yeah. can come here now. <laughs> I am going to need two on one side and two on another side. Okay, so now all that we learned with Dr. Michael and Dr. Nathan, now we're going to try to uh, use it in a, an experiment. So. Just as it happened with the balloon, we saw that electrons can travel, right? And with atoms, the same thing can happen. One atom can gain one electron and can, it can become negatively charged, or it can lose an electron and then become positively charged, right? But those atoms that are charged now have a very special name, which is ions, okay? And we learned then when we have a positive charge and a negative charge and we make them interact, they tend to stick together, right? They attract each other. And that attraction, when it comes to ions, turns into a bond and we can make a new chemical out of that bond. So it's, it's a lot like what was happening with the balloon yes, and the hair, but just very much, similar. much stronger. Yeah. Exactly. That bond is called ionic bond, and the new chemical that we create with that bond is called an ionic chemical. Let's see if we can make one, shall we? So now I have a positive ion solution of lead and a negative ion solution called iodide. So if we pour them together, what do you think is going to happen? Are they going to repel each other or are they going to stick together? Oh. Stick together. Exactly. So now I'm going to need two volunteers. Let's very carefully pour this together. So we can see we have two clear solutions. Pour it. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> It's not okay. a clear solution anymore. I'm what calling that a on? reaction that worked. How cool is that? <laughs> so as you can see, now it's coloured. And if you look at it closely, you can see it's turning solid. Right? Is it true? It's, yeah, it's like yeah, look at this. down the bottom. Yeah. It's awesome, right? It's powdery. So we just created a new chemical, which is, if it was made of lead and iodide. So how do we call this? Lead iodide. Oh my God! But these she's guys. She's already a doctor so for a day. Yeah. yeah, doctor for a week. I'm making you lose. She's just doctor for a life. <laughs> like, she, she's amazing. So, um, so these chemicals, as you can see, are very colored, and they're usually used in paints, or they're used in tablets, or as fertilizers, and they form beautiful crystals. Now, it's going to take some time. That's why I already made it at home. But look at how gorgeous this is. Done. This is going to turn. It's like glitter. It's like golden glitter. Yeah. That's awesome, right? Beautiful. So you can see these shiny crystals. Ionic chemicals are usually crystals, like the ones you see in caves. And, but and so like when you're out with rocks and things, those crystals that you yeah, see in rocks. Exactly. Ionic. Yeah, exactly. And they're very brittle because if you smash them with a hammer, they're going to just smash into a million pieces. Mm -hmm. And I can also tell you that you eat some. I'm not going to be eating anything I see on this you table. Do, you <laughs> do eat some. 
Look at this. Ah. Salt. Salt is made of positive ions, which are sodium ions, and negative ions, which is chloride ions. And you just put it on your dinner, these nice crystals. So not all ionic compounds are dangerous, crazy looking paint pigments that can become fireworks as well. No, no. some are very <laughs> useful. You use them in your life. Yeah. But there are very nice things that you can do with chemistry and when you know bonding and atoms. And I'm sure that Dr. Michael knows a lot about I another think, kind of Are we of going ions. to see another couple of these as well? Or? Oh, yeah. Why Is not? We can colors? do it now. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I, I love these color things. What about you guys? Are you ready for what another if one? Okay. We can pour all these chemicals together and see what they become. Just let's do this first. One at a time. Nice pouring, Zane. Oh, you can be a chemist as well. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a half the job, pour pouring the things. Job. Otherwise, a waiter. If <gasps> oh, look at that. Wow. Put that on a white background if you can. Absolutely. We're going to swirl it around now. Wow. Let's see. You've turned it into beetroot Two colorless juice. solutions just became red. What's going to happen to these two? One at a time? Yes. Very good. Oh, we have a lot of promising chemistry. I chemistry. know. When I was doing chemistry, I, oh, I was going to say none of them worked out this well. <laughs> <laughs> but the, these chemists oh, know their stuff. Look that at that. That's beautiful. awesome. Beautiful. That's awesome. So we have blue, red, golden. What else do you want? No, I'm pretty happy with that. We we'll have everything. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think this one's called? So that one was iron and... No, this is, I cannot show you all the tricks. Oh, okay, no, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Some of it has to be a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Top secret chemistry. But how great are you guys, all of our guys, volunteers? Very good. Dr. Zane, Dr. You're all ready to take your major in chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bronte and Dr. Edith, thanks so much. And we'll see you again later. All right, and now I think, are we ready to go over to Dr. Michael? Yeah, I guess so. What do you want to tell us? A hard Everyone. act to follow, Dr. Michael. I'm <laughs> sorry, we've got the colours of the rainbow and the junior chemists. Yeah, I know. There's going to be a hard act to follow, that's for sure. Yeah. But you know what? Everything in the world can't just all be beautiful colours and crystals, right? I know, but that's what we want to see here on the show. Well, so. there's other pretty things too, right? Okay, okay. Good, Let's good. Just, just yeah, go yeah. with me on this, okay, all right? <laughs> so if we go to the next, there we go. So, for example, you might be able to see on the slide some beautiful shiny bars. Yes. Okay. Now, they certainly don't look like the crystals that we made before, no, right? No, they look like gold bullion. They look like gold bars. Yeah, and that's obviously, that's exactly what they are. We are good at seeing... Metals, they are made of metal, and this particular metal is called gold, okay? Now, the reason why we can see them and see they're clearly metal because they have a very different appearance to crystals, okay? They're shiny, um, they're not brittle, we know they're not brittle, so if you hit them with a hammer, they're not likely to smash into lots of pieces. Um, they're actually quite strong most of the time. And you wouldn't make fireworks out of them. That would be well, no. Very expensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, especially these particular gold <laughs> ones. So um, the differences in their properties and these are kinds of things, it comes from the different chemical bonding that's going on inside. So unlike um, the ionic chemicals that Dr. Frederick has been working with, metallic, um, sorry, metals actually have, instead of having positive ions and negative ions together and, and that attraction holding it all together, metals actually have all, the, all of the atoms in the metal actually considered to be neutral. That means they don't have any positive charge or negative charge and they're just neutral and so charged So it holds balance. them together? Well, actually, it's all the electrons, again, doing all the work. So the electrons are buzzing around, jumping from atom to atom like little busy bees and in a way that actually holds all those atoms together in a, in a very strong way, actually. Um, you can think about this... Um, in terms of fairy bread at a birthday party. You've had fairy bread before? <laughs> I have. It's been a few decades, but yes, I have had oh, fairy bread. <laughs> I have two little kids, so I have fairy oh, yeah. bread every, every other, other weekend. Day. <laughs> yeah, and it's fantastic. I love it. So we've got bread. Don't think too much about the bread, but the butter and the sprinkles, okay? So the sprinkles are like the atoms, uh -huh. and the butter is like the electrons that hold all those sprinkles together, okay? This kind of bonding is called metallic bonding. So we had ionic bonding over there, and this kind of bonding is called metallic bonding. So some fun facts about metallic bonding. Because of all of those electrons jumping around all the time, it's actually really good for conducting electricity. Ah. And that's why we have um, metallic bonded substances like metals in our cables that conduct electricity to TVs and things like that. 
Um, and the other thing is that the, because of the electrons jumping around, that's actually what makes metals shiny. It's a bit more complicated, but that's actually why metals are shiny as well. Well, we saw jumping and light before, so we know there's a bit of a connection. So, so, yeah, there's yeah. a link there, absolutely. <laughs> you might have to go to uni to really understand it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. All right, so my next experiment I have already messed up because I added one of the ingredients too, too early. Oh. But if you can imagine that this is actually a colourless solution, mm -hmm. okay? So imagine it looks more like this, but I accidentally added ingredient B a little too early. Well, Dr. Nathan actually did it, but oh, I may, I may have told him Michael, to do it. Dr. Michael, what a cop-out. It may, it may, I may have told him to do Nine it. Nine parts of chemistry is getting the experiment wrong and the tenth part is blaming your colleagues. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we have here a colourless solution, okay? And it's actually a metal inside the solution, would you believe it or not? OK, but it doesn't yet. Well, if you imagine this, that doesn't yet look like metals like the shiny bars on the screen, does no. it? And that's because the metal here isn't in metallic bonding yet, but rather it is in um, their positive ions. Yeah, right? so and it's floating like the ones that we saw before. That's yeah. exactly right. So to make something positive go to neutral, because remember, we need neutral for metallic bonding. We have to add some electrons, mm -hmm. OK? which are negative. So we add some negative to the positive and it becomes neutral. So that was the ingredient that I accidentally added Oops. too early. Happens to um, the best. It was the electron. So I, I added another clear solution to this and that was actually a solution of a sugar called glucose. Okay, so it's not the sugar in your lollies and things like that. That's called sucrose. This is the more basic, the most simple sugar and it's the one that our bodies use mm. for energy. So hopefully you will have some glucose in you right now. <laughs> now the glucose in this flask would hopefully do a chemical reaction with the metal ions in it, and that chemical reaction involves the electrons going from the glucose to the metal ions and bringing them to a neutral charge state and giving them all the ingredients that they need to do metallic bonding. So they'll start behaving like metals and looking like and metals. Looking like metals mm, really should. I That's see right, where you're exactly. Going. So if this experiment was going to work today, <laughs> unfortunately, we've had a bit of trouble with this particular one. That's why I sort of wanted to try it, start it early. I reckon while we're blaming things, let's blame the floods as well. Maybe there's yeah. a contamination. From yeah, from I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's yeah, that sounds about right. Well, actually, what it can come down to is that the flask needs to be scrupulously clean for this experiment. Uh. And we got these flasks out of our lab. We didn't have much time to prepare, and I'm making a big excuse, but basically, <laughs> I think they may not be clean enough for oh, this experiment to work. So we have we have got a little bit of mirroring at the I bottom. Can see? Oh yeah, I can see that. My hair looks that? amazing. <laughs> it's, Yours also. It's slightly better oh. in this one that I prepared with yeah, earlier. It's yeah. not still not perfect, but it's slightly better. It's a little bit more yeah. metallic-y. You can see some sort of metallic reflection off there. You can. So that's showing us that we've started to make some metallic bonding by moving those electrons from the glucose. All to about the, the electrons metals. every single time Absolutely. in chemistry. Indeed. Yeah. And cleaning your gear. So lesson yeah. for next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. So, okay, so um, we've, made, we've made some positive ions. We've tried to make some positive ions turn into metallic bonding. But as a scientist, or as we're all scientists, we like to challenge ideas and try new things. So I wonder, could we, instead of adding electrons to something positive to go to metallic bonding, can we go take start something that is in metallic bonding mm -hmm. and pull those electrons away and make them go back to positive ions? Well, the answer is yes, <laughs> if we choose the right chemicals uh. to do our experiment with. Uh. Okay, so this is our first chemical. It's called... Mm, aluminium. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Alfoil. Al it's made of aluminium, that's right. Now, as you can see, it's beautiful and shiny, as a metal in metallic bonding would be, and it's quite strong for its very thin size. And okay. it would conduct electricity, no doubt. It could do, yes, that's right. So I will, um, I've already got some aluminium in this flask here over there, already scrunched up, ready for my experiment. And then my other chemical that I'm going to work with here is in this flask, or this bottle, and it's called hydrochloric acid, okay? So it's... Yeah. <laughs> I've got gloves on, yeah, so yeah, no. probably not a bad idea. <laughs> hydrochloric acid, we have it in our tummies. It's also, we also add it into pools to um, keep the pools clean. Yep. And uh, when hydrochloric acid is concentrated like this, it actually has the capability of digesting or eating metal. Mm -hmm. So it's not really something you'd want to swim in, but you have to remember, an important thing about chemicals is as, as we dilute them down, they become less dangerous for our body. So yeah. a little bit of hydrochloric acid diluted into your entire pool 
isn't going to eat metal or eat you. So don't stress about that too no. much. No, yeah. That metal should be stressing, though, because I feel like it's not going to get diluted at all. <laughs> no, well, the, yeah, the metal for is... a wild it, ride. It hopefully is in for a bit of a ride. Okay, so, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my acid, my hydrochloric acid, into the alfoil, and there will be a chemical reaction between the alfoil and the acid where electrons will jump from our metallic-bonded aluminium to the hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid. That's why it's called hydrochloric mm -hmm. acid, because it has yep. hydrogen in it. When this happens, the hydrogen will actually go through a chemical change and turn into hydrogen gas. Right. Okay. So our hypothesis could be that if we can see some hydrogen gas coming out of our reaction, that means that we must have the electrons jumping from the alfoil to the hydrochloric acid. So right? if a gas is being made, we might see some bubbles, but we won't be able to see if it's hydrogen. No, that's exactly right, because our eyes can't see hydrogen. It's invisible to us, just like protons and electrons. But in the same way, we might be able to do an experiment that shows the effects of hydrogen, even with, if we can't see the hydrogen gas itself. So let's just give that a try, OK? All right, so I've got this here. I'll just get that out of the way. Yeah, that'll, that'll be great. All right, hopefully that's nice and clear. OK, so as I pour this in, we're going to see a chemical reaction. And if we dim the lights in as I go, um, we should also be able to see a nice flame. Here we go, OK. Stepping back a bit further. No offence. Oh. Maybe a hydrochloric acid isn't concentrated enough after all. <laughs> oh, this has been... No! Have we got more acid? No, we don't have any more acid. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's so disappointing. I... No. I don't think it's working. I think there's not enough acid in there, sadly. Oh, my experiments today have been a real big flop. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, that's OK, because you have so many great experiments when you do them with kids on Teams, when you do the um, scientist Zoom. <laughs> great time show. to plug our Zoom in science. <laughs> Thanks so much for that. It normally works really well. Yeah, it does. But, you know, what are some of the reasons it might not have worked? Um, it's chemistry. It's chemistry. <laughs> Yeah, it's chemistry. Yeah. it's chemistry. So when you're doing something live, um, especially in chemistry, so all you need to do is uh, make a quick, uh, an easy mistake when you're trying to make up solutions yeah. and things like that. So maybe it was too dilute, so there just wasn't enough there to, to yeah. really get it going. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So if it's too dilute, it won't it won't digest. So it's a bit more like what's in the pool, unfortunately, instead yeah. of what's what we'd hope for. So. But what we might have seen would be, if it had worked, we would have seen... A beautiful fire flame, OK? <laughs> so Just picture that. <laughs> How incredible. Again, so a lot of imagining today. That's the magic of chemistry, right? Yes, it's true. Um, so we would actually see a flame, and that's because the hydrogen gas is highly flammable. That is that it catches fire very easily. And would it be a particular colour like we saw? Yeah, so I added some extra copper in there, mm. so the fire would have been green. So oh. just imagine that. It's if a beautiful it worked, it would have been amazing. Yeah, but yeah. I reckon we're going to have a lot of luck with all the rest of the Absolutely. This is not a... Know, this not a bad omen at all. Just because one experiment doesn't work, that doesn't mean we strip the doctorness off Michael and he just becomes Mr. Bloke. What no, if two? He's, still, <laughs> he's still a chemist. <laughs> OK, so anyway, um, that, that experiment would show that uh, we've changed our metallic bonding to positive ions anyway. Yeah. So we've got... Um, our world certainly doesn't just have metallic, shiny substances like that and crystals... You know, there's lots of other things around the place as well. So there must be something else going on. So Dr. Nathan's going to talk about that. Yay. Don't yeah. give up hope, Dr. Michael. You're still a great chemist. Come <laughs> on. We've all had big failures. Big failures. Don't worry. <laughs> That's OK. So, um, so we've talked about ionic bonding and metallic bonding. And yep. as Dr. Michael said, not everything is a metal or a crystal. Actually, most things that we see are squishy like Yeah, like yourself, us. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and so squishy things are usually made up of what we call covalent bonding. And it's actually probably the best kind of bonding. And the reason <laughs> is, is that it's the fairest kind of bonding because Aww. the atoms actually share their electrons. Aww. So ionic bonding steals electrons. Yep. And metallic bonding just lives in a sea of electrons and, I, and covalent bonding, the atoms share their electrons. Mm. So we've got some structures up on the screen and you may notice the ones across the top look a little bit familiar. We've got these balls and sticks together yep. that we normally think of molecules, right? We often show them like this. So this is actually hydrogen gas, like Dr. Michael was trying to make, <laughs> reacting with oxygen to form water. So the orange is the oxygen in the two blue balls are the hydrogen. Yep. And water, we know, is a bent boomerang shape. And yeah. we always draw it with these sticks. 
but from the sticks we can't really tell why it would be a boomerang, right? Why don't the hydrogens just stick out to the side? And again, we have to go back to our real model of what mm. electrons look like and what atoms look like. So on the bottom, I've got what hydrogen gas kind of looks like with its electrons around the outside being shared. And then the oxygen atom with its weird, weird electron mm. shells. The balloon animals, yep. The balloon animals, right? And when the blue hydrogen electrons interact with the yellow oxygen electrons and they share them, you can see that we've got those green clouds now. And that's where they're sharing the electrons between the hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom. The blue and the yellow clouds are literally kind of combining together and sharing and blue and yellow makes green. So not that they really look blue they're not or that yellow they're blue or green, and green, we're just but it showing makes sense it. sense to us. Exactly, yeah, right? right? What they're actually sharing is the electrons and the energy, okay? And the way that those electrons and energy balance out actually means that those two hydrogen atoms have to sit at that bent angle yep. because there's e electrons in the back pushing them down. And yeah. that's actually why we get our boomerang shape for our ah, water molecule. And that explains, if anyone was watching the biology show yesterday, that explains why water is a bit like this and heads and fists and stuff, which we went into yesterday, but don't need to cover today. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All of that actually comes from chemistry, not from biology. Oh, it's so possessive. Yeah. So <laughs> now, as chemists, we can make, make mo um, small molecules like water, but what if we go crazy? Let's see how many covalent bonds we can make in a row. Okay. So Dr. Frederica's got something to help me with. Here it is. Thank you. So as we've always started, pretty much, we start with a solution. Oh, two solutions. We've got a liquid, clear liquid on top, yep. and we've got this nice purple liquid on the yep. bottom. Now, what? Now we've just got two um, liquids here, but look what happens when I reach in with my tweezers. Maybe you need to hold it. So, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that looks really disgusting. Does it? What does it look like? Um, it looks like giant booger. Looks actually. like a it giant looks like booger. Looks like a stream of snot. Yeah. So would you believe that I actually, in my daily research, work with giant boogers pretty much every day? Fun. <laughs> so this is what we call a polymer. So I'm a polymer chemist, and so I like to make these polymers. Now, a polymer just means poly means many, and mer means molecule. It just means many molecules connected yep. together. And so that's how we get our really, really long That's string. amazing, isn't it? But I think we can go a little bit crazier than this. If I can get some help from Dr. Michael. Dr. Michael, your chance to redeem yourself. No. You've done a good job this time. <laughs> you carry ladder like no other chemist I've ever seen. <laughs> so what's going on is I've got one molecule in my purple solution and one molecule in my clear solution. <laughs> So let's call them molecule A and B. Now molecule A loves to react with molecule B and molecule B loves to react with molecule A. And so what we do is we build up these gigantic chains of A, B, A, B, A, B all the way along. Aye. And so my chemical reaction is just happening where those two layers meet. Now that's pretty cool. That shows you what a polymer is. I think that polymer needs a little round of applause. <laughs> and so you might <laughs> notice done. that it's quite flexible and stretchy and it's fairly strong. <laughs> Fairly strong. <laughs> if I dry it's it out, it gets young. really, really strong. Yeah. Um, but this is what we call nylon. Huh? Now, people might recognise nylon. Where have you seen nylon before, Bernie? Um, fishing lines. Exactly, fishing yep. line. Now, fishing line is actually much stronger than my nylon here. So that's how we catch our big fish. Um, and that's because of the power of the covalent bonds. They're very, very strong bonds, OK? Um, but so that's... We've, we've yep. got ionic bonds, which are not very strong, and ionic compounds that smash when you hit exactly. them and can dissolve. And we've got metallic bonds, which um, are shiny and, and conduct electricity and quite strong, mm. but nothing like covalent no, bonds. No, covalent bonds are the, the strongest. Kings. Because yep. they share their electrons, they also share their energy. And we're going to look at breaking up some of that and getting some of that energy back later. But first, Dr. Frederic is going to show you another polymer. All right. Is I it will. colourful? It is awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that. Okay. Yep. So, as Dr. Nathan was saying... Let me just remove the tissue yeah, with the, gross the stuff. disgusting booger. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we're doing something cool here. Oh, yeah, so sorry. Think... We'll keep it pretty on this side. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, we were talking about polymers, which are made by bonding to binding together many, many molecules, yeah. right? And you can do fishing lanes and clothes with polymers like nylon. But what if I told you that many polymers you can eat this time as well. Okay. Like, have you ever had bubble tea? I have not had bubble tea, but I know it's very what? popular. <laughs> and all the cool kids are drinking it, so I want to learn of about course. bubble tea because I have not had it. Oh my God, then let me show yep, you something. Please. So 
at the bottom of your of your bubble tea when you will have yes, one because as soon as we experience. finish you're gonna yeah. go and get a bubble tea <laughs> yes i'll be an addict at the bottom you have those tiny colorful little bits uh -huh. they can also pop in your mouth you have oh. never seen them but i'm gonna make them for okay you good today. great yes. Because those tiny beads, they're made of alginate, which, which is a polymer that uh, comes from algae. Right. Okay. And that polymer... Is it squishy like the... It's going to be squishy, yep. but also prettier. I promise. All right. <laughs> yes. Ah. So um, uh, if you look at the slide, uh, alginate is represented as an um, orange ribbon. And mm -hmm. you can see all those tiny little... I think it balls. actually says worms there. So it's yeah, like an <laughs> yeah. orange worm. Yeah. yeah, but pretty again. Yeah, very pretty. pretty. <laughs> yes. And you can see those tiny uh, red beads are negative charges. Right. So this alginate is a negatively charged polymer. Okay. And I have it here and I colored it with a red uh, food coloring because mm -hmm. it's usually transparent. And this is a liquid, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a thick liquid. Yeah, yeah it's because definitely a it's liquid. Um, similar to sugar. So yep. it's kind of a sugary kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So if I take this liquid, it doesn't look like beads into bubble tea at all, right? Mm, well, it just looks like, yeah, yeah no. If I take this liquid, which is negatively charged polymer, yeah. and I drip it and I drop it into this calcium solution, look at that. Oh. It was liquid. And now it's solid. Look how pretty it is. Try to make some. Okay. Drop it. <laughs> Never do oops. it. Look how cool that oh. is. I it's can do chemistry. You yeah. can. But what's <laughs> happening? Why? It was a liquid and now yeah. it's become solid. What happened? The point is that in this solution, there are uh, positive ions like calcium. Right. And if you can see in the slide, calcium is represented as those um, blue balls. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. So what calcium does, it binds all the negative charges on our polymers and it cross-links them together to form this 3D mesh which is called a gel. So that it can't move around as freely anymore because it's got all those cross-links. Yeah, it's free. not a liquid exactly. held in place. But you know gel, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, we call it jelly, yep. Yeah, gel O, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. The only difference is you don't need calcium ions to tie it together, to cross-link together. You just need heat. You heat it up uh -huh. and you create gel. Beautiful. How beautiful is that? Yeah, I uh, think I've found a new career. Making you should, bubble I, tea, like if things go to... You, you know, know what? Yeah. what? You're going to like this even more. Okay. That looks like the new booster for COVID. Oh, you got uh, me. Damn it. <laughs> no, I prepared a lot of solutions with yeah. different colors, and I'm going to put them all in. All right. Go to town. Help me out. Dr. Frederica. Get a, get a couple. Okay. Help me out. Yeah. Let's go. Let's yeah. do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help. I always have to race. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Hi, Come on. Hi, That is it's great. Cool. Let's do something. Look. Let's let you do so. Oh wow! Hey, they're uh, beautiful, Dr. Right? Nathan. I'm sorry, my Little experiments are cooler. Polymer yeah, envy. Are. <laughs> they're definitely and cooler. They're so shiny. Is yeah. that one going to be liquid in the middle? Yeah, it pops. It does pop. It's yeah, yeah. Like right. the beads in bubble tea. In they bubble pop. tea, you're going to oh. get a bubble tea today. I'm going to have a bubble tea. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. But that's not the only thing we can do with covalent bonding. Okay. There's more. All right. Oh, that's right. So we were talking, uh, Bernie, about how covalent bonds share their mm -hmm. electrons and so they share their energy. And so we're going to unlock a bit of the power of the, of the uh, covalent bond. So here okay. I'm going to give you a small vial. Yep. And in that vial we've got a molecule called phosphorus, or sorry, an, a, a, an atom called phosphorus, an yep. element. And it's forming what we call red phosphorus. Yeah, it's so. a reddish burgundy colour. Yeah. Yep. Is it doing very much right now? It's just shaking when I shake it. This doesn't else. do very much. Let's see if we can make this a little bit okay. uh, more reactive. All right. So this is probably my coolest experiment. So I'm okay. going to put my cool safety glasses All right. on. <laughs> which are my sunglasses. Yeah. We're going to start up our Bunsen burner. That is a very cool Bunsen burner. And we're going to just heat up this glass rod. And while we heat this up, we can lower the lights. And all I'm going to do is so sometimes to kickstart a chemical reaction, we need a little bit of heat. And so yep. we're going to use the heat to kickstart our chemical reaction. Okay. You're not burning your fingers there? It's I'm not, not burning my fingers. Luckily, really? glass is a very bad conductor of electricity. because oh, it's not metal. That's right, because yeah. it's not metal. So we've got that nice and hot. So let's see what happens when I touch the red phosphorus. Here. <laughs> <laughs> wow! So 
I've managed to make some fire today for us. <laughs> a little warning might have been nice, Dr Nathan. <laughs> Apologies. That I hope is, everyone at home... That is a very, very bright blow out. It's just getting a bit where I can look at it. Now, that is spectacular. So what does that look like to you? It looks like a really bright light bulb. Really bright like light bulb? super light. So I like it because I like, look at the, the clouds of smoke in there yeah. making nice patterns, and to yeah. me it looks like a sun. So I call this my red phosphorus sun. Yeah. <laughs> So the key with Do you have actual children or is this your red phosphorus son? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got, <laughs> Go the, uh, you've got the uh, sarcastic <laughs> sense of humour for a scientist. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about um, phosphorus here. So phosphorus is a molecule that's only made up of phosphorus atoms. Yep. And so we started, first of all, with our little vial of quite not flammable yeah. red phosphorus here. And if we look on the screen, we can have a look at our slide and we can see that the red phosphorus on the, on the side is this like zigzaggy pattern. Right. And the fact that this is long zigzag type molecule, kind of like a polymer, um, it's actually quite safe and stable when it's in this form. Okay. But when we add a little bit of heat, we convert it from the zigzaggy molecule into the pyramid structure, and that's called white phosphorus, which is much, much more reactive. So that's lots of little pyramids, not lots a of long little chain pyramids. of anything. No, that's oh, right. Okay, and gotcha. so now the phosphorus atoms are really quite tightly balled up, yep. and so they're much more reactive. Right. And as soon as the white phosphorus contacts the air or the oxygen that I have present in the flask, it catches on fire. Right. And that first just little bit that I started by heating it up with the glass rod, it caught fire, and then what happens? Oh, well, so it, when it catches fire, it's going to give off more heat and that will affect the ones around That's them right. and so on and so, so on, on and so on. So on and so on until yep. we run out of red phosphorus and the reaction stops. Wow. Now, have you seen anything that looks like this that's flammable before? I have, on the end of a match. On the end of a matchstick. That's exactly right. So matchstick heads are made of red phosphorus. Um, and just that little bit of friction and heat is what kickstarts the reaction. So they're perfectly fine just sitting in the box. Yep. But if you heat them up... That's it. Not go. that. Not quite as bad as that. Um, so these are what we call allotropes. So this is where we have just one type of element bonded together in a molecule, and the way that they're connected really changes their properties. So carbon's another really good example. So if you're sitting there at school today and you're listening to us at school, you're probably using a pencil, and the pencil's got graphite in it, which is a carbon allotrope. It's really black and it's really soft. Alternatively, you might have seen a diamond before, and a diamond is very clear and very hard, and that's because just the way that the carbon atoms are bonded together is different, which gives us these different structures. But they're and in the lab, covalent. But they're all covalent bonds. Yeah. And in the lab, we can make even stranger ones like soccer balls um, and uh, <laughs> things like that. Which have a purpose. You're not just sitting around making soccer balls. No, that's balls right. Because you can. But why not? Well, why not? <laughs> so that is when we like unleash all of that energy very quickly. But uh, Dr. Michael is going to show us what happens when we unleash that uh, energy in a little bit more controlled way. Excellent. Absolutely. Wow, that was fantastic. It Dr. was Nate. stunning. I'm glad that you've you've given us uh, t table table yep. B a little bit more <laughs> a little bit more pizzazz. Red. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so but it doesn't just look cool. Something cool is happening with the with the atoms and uh, and things. Have you ever wondered where the energy that like the heat and the light of a fire actually is coming from when you have a fire turned on? Mm. Mm. Well, if you want light uh, in your home, you just flip the light switch on, right? And the electricity comes to the light bulb, and that's providing the energy for the light. Or if you want to heat up your house, you can turn on the air conditioner or heater. And again, electricity comes in and, and helps it produce heat. But when you have a fire like this one, there's no electrical cables coming in the back here. Can you confirm that? No electrical cables in the I, back there here? There are zero electrical cables. He's not lying. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm not lying. So the energy has to be coming from inside. And, and like we saw with those allotropes, the energy... It turns out that in the covalent bonds, there is energy. Actually, no, that's not right. There is a lot of energy yeah. inside covalent bonds, okay? So when we break those bonds, like we do in a very hot situation, like a fire, sometimes the energy can be released as heat or light. So us humans have come up with many clever ways to harness that energy and light. For example, in a car, if you put fuel in it, turn the engine on, it starts burning the fuel inside the engine and that gives the engine the energy it needs to turn and turn those wheels, yep. okay? Or another an one... an old-fashioned car that runs old, on petrol. Petrol. Yep. Oh, well, yeah, yep. that's right. Okay, back on electricity, though, when you charge up your batteries or if you watch TV, probably, unfortunately, most of that electricity is probably coming from a coal-burning power plant where they actually have coal in a fire, they burn it, they harness the energy from that using machinery converted into electricity, which travels down cables made of metallic bonded substances all the way through to your house where you're charging up your battery or watching your TV. 
and that gives your TV the energy yeah. it needs. So you can see it all comes back to the energy that's in covalent bonding. Yeah. So, so breaking a covalent bond releases the energy that if we can capture it and use it, um, is what runs our world. Basically, that's exactly right. So next time you're watching Netflix at home, you can appreciate all the little covalent bonds that are breaking to allow you that to happen. You can probably hear them scream ah! as they break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening real hard. So, um, but on to our next experiment. If we are very careful um, and we use just the right molecules and we do the right reactions, we can actually make them release different colours of light, um, not just, you know, fire light, but also all sorts of different colours of light. So, if Dr Federica, if you would like to come um, over yeah. here and uh, we're going to try another experiment. Fingers crossed this one works. <laughs> Have um, faith. OK, all right. So here, let's just do the experiment. If we dim the lights right down, here we go. Oh. Oh. Let's try this one. Oh, there's That's a lot so of pretty. glowing going on. Oh, that one doesn't glow. Oh, that one's super pretty. So hopefully you can see that each of the different solutions is glowing a different colour. Yeah. So the reaction is producing energy that is... Um, of a slightly, a slightly different amount of energy, and light is, uh, as Federica was, Dr. Federica was saying earlier, <laughs> it's very closely the different colours of light is very closely related to different amounts of energy. Yeah. So by controlling the amount of energy that's released, we can have different colours of light. Oh, fantastic! Now, uh, yeah, go on. So, so the different colours of light correspond to different chemicals that you had in each solution and their particular energy signature. Yes. Well, it was, to be exact, in this particular reaction, all of the chemicals were, all of the chemical reactions were the same. Oh. They all produced blue light, which is the most energetic kind of light. Yeah. And then we actually doped into these other ones a little bit of another kind of molecule kind of called a dye. Uh -huh. So to get them, I just ripped open some highlighters and got the <laughs> highlighter ink out of them. I was going to say, it looks like highlighter, highlighter colours. Ink. It yeah. really is. They're highlighter <laughs> colours. So you, I put the highlighter ink in each one. Now, the reason why highlighter ink is so amazing is, and so bright is because it actually emits its own light. Mm. Um, and so when we produce that blue light that's high in energy, it actually interacts with those dye molecules and it converts the colour of the light to the colour of the dye nice molecule. Nice trickery. Nice so trick. chemical so you trickery. Caught me. You caught yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm we can do it. some cool stuff. <laughs> So this is the, like, the colours of different light, like the th colours that come out of your TV. Um, in that case, it has a bit of help from electricity to provide the energy, but the colour of the light coming out of TV actually coming from molecules in a similar way. All right. Um, and also, if you've ever played with glow sticks, when you snap the glow stick, there's actually a chemical reaction going on inside the glow stick, just like this, that produces the light. So if you... The cool thing about them, though, is if you put them in the freezer, they actually stop glowing. And that's because as the molecules get so freezing cold, they don't move around enough to do chemical reactions anymore. Yep. And so the re chemical reaction stops and the light stops producing. But if you pull them out of the freezer the next day or even the next week, the molecules start to warm up again, start to move around again, and the chemical reaction starts going fast again Beautiful. and you start producing the light. Keep that glow going. Yeah, the yeah. brave can live forever. Exactly. <laughs> so... Heating up a chemical reaction is one way we can make a chemical reaction go faster. But yeah. there is actually another way, which I think Dr. Federica... I can show you that. Yeah, so speaking about making reactions faster and bonds breaking, uh, have you ever used, like, hydrogen peroxide? Do you know what Hydrogen peroxide, is? when I wanted to be a surfy chick back in yeah, the day. Yeah, that as yeah. well. <laughs> but oh, more importantly, when you were a kid and you were jumping around and maybe you fall and maybe hurt your knee uh, and something. To clean up the, exactly. the wound. Yeah. Exactly. Those hydrogen peroxide of drops would clean your wound. A great pain. Yeah. Yes, that, that is <laughs> why. Effectively. Because they're able to kill bacteria, yeah. for example. But how is hydrogen peroxide made? Like, what is it made of? So it's made, if you can see on the slide, of uh, two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. Mm -hmm. And that bond, when it breaks, can form water and oxygen. Oxygen now is a gas, yeah. right? And this bond breaking, it's a very slow reaction, but we can make it faster by using molecules that are called catalysts. Uh -huh. Okay, so now I'm gonna make an experiment. Okay, should I be getting away? Cause you yeah. should, yep, you really no. should. <laughs> Cause I got the cool experiments. Yeah, <laughs> you own this one. Uh, yes, so I'm gonna use this catalyst to help break the bond in a very fast way. Okay. I'm going to liberate oxygen yep. 
And in this flask here, in this bottle, I have soap. Uh -huh. Why do I need soap? Because soap is going to trap the oxygen and make bubbles. Does anybody know what experiment I'm talking about? I think everyone at home might have <laughs> some idea if they don't already. Whoa! <laughs> Come on, how beautiful was that? <laughs> that was pretty spectacular. This is the experiment that keeps on giving. Yes, it's it never going. gets boring. No. So yes, our catalyst helped us making it very fast and the soap helped us trap the oxygen and that's why it just went up. And the very that's famous awesome, right? elephant toothpaste. And that's is the, that elephant right? toothpaste. the elephant very toothpaste. Very well done. Oh, it's a great show. I've never seen it that effective. Um, it would look like a pretty scummy soap, though. It's not very <laughs> clean looking. I wouldn't toothpaste. brush my teeth well, with that no, either. No, no. <laughs> well, no. Definitely not. Oh, fantastic. So catalysts help speed up the reaction. They do. Um, and, and that was a uh, that was a covalent reaction. Yes, that's as a well. covalent bond that lots gets of broken. Energy. Exactly. All right. So right back to the start, oh, Brandon. We've seen yep. lots of explosions, lots of mess today. Yep. But we showed us this very, very strange reaction I at the start. I do love this one. All right, and so now we can actually think about it because we've learned a little bit about bonding. What is actually going on here? So we've got our solution here. Uh, it's currently starting at yellow, right? Mm -hmm. Yellow, this is from a molecule called iodine. This is two iodine atoms bonded together in a covalent bond. Uh -huh. Now, if you've ever cleaned your wound with antiseptic, like yep. uh, betadine that's nice and orangey-brown, yep. that's because of iodine. It's when a you really weren't great suffering from, uh, from hydroxide, hydroxide, hydroxide then, that's it. Had a nice stainy one, yep. So you might have had uh, the iodine. Yep. So that's a covalent bond. And so what we've got in the solution is hydrogen peroxide. Yep. The hydrogen peroxide can react with the iodine. <laughs> Um, doing a chemical reaction and break it down into iodide ions. Um, so we saw the hydrogen peroxide a few times today, including in the elephant toothpaste. Yep. So the iodide ions we saw right at the start of the show with the lead iodide, they were the colourless solution. And so when we see after the so blue, quick. we see this nice colourless solution, that's our iodide ions. Now, in the solution, we've got this balance of iodine and iodide. Yeah. And when the balance is just right, we can form a covalent, sorry, an ionic bond between um, the iodine and the iodide and another molecule in there called starch. So uh -huh. starch is another natural polymer that exists that we like to eat. Mm -hmm. so we've seen a few polymers today that we can eat. And the starch... Mostly we can't, though. I need these ones because they're from the lab. <laughs> um, but the starch... Uh, can form ionic bonds with the iodine and we get that nice purple complex, right? The, the energy associated with that complex gives us that beautiful purple colour. So we've got ionic and we've got covalent, covalent in there. We've got no metallic. No, no metallic bonding in this one. That's right. um, but the, key, the last key step to this, right, is that the ionic bonding between the starch and the iodine is weak. Right? And so that means uh, because it's a weak bond, we can break it very easily. So we break up that blue complex, we go back to our colourless solution mm -hmm. and the whole cycle can start again. And so you can see here, just by changing bonding, we can create something that looked like magic at the start of the show. And now we can nearly completely understand ah, what's going on. So we've had the ignition, we've had the magic, and it all comes down to... Chemistry. Chemical chemistry. Bonds. Yeah, all right, chemistry. Well <laughs> done. Well, it's time now to wrap up and say goodbye to our actual doctor chemist, but we also want to welcome back in a careful way around the disgusting toothpaste mess. Come on in to our volunteer chemists for a day. We've got Bronte and Edith and Lulu and Zane. And um, was there anything that did you learn anything new today or is this all because you're all pretty much amazing chemists did you already know everything did you learn anything new today no. <laughs> <laughs> well you already knew lead iodide when we uh, when you asked it what was the most impressive experiment um i really liked the one where dr nathan yeah. pulled out the, the snot looking the, thing yeah, the giant booger that's always a bit of a winner what was your favorite zane um probably was the um uh, the, uh, the highlighter uh, pens one? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty specky. And what about you, Bronte? I like the one with the, um, the big, like, the light, the big... Oh, that was eyeball. stunning. Did you burn your eyeballs out with that one? No. <laughs> was there one that really stood out for you, Lulu? Yes. The oh, the oh yeah, yeah, the coloured gooey business, yeah. Well, chemistry is a bit of a winner all round. Are we all going to be chemists, do we think? Yeah, because you get to wear these cool outfits and uh, have lots of fun. And even if <coughs> things don't always work, it doesn't matter, does it? Because <laughs> we're always learning. So everyone, a big hooray.
for our junior chemists for a day, for our chemists for always. And I hope you've had a great time there at home, whether you're here in Australia, whether you're zooming in from China. Happy Rest of World Science Festival Brisbane 2022. And make sure you have some fun with chemistry and any other science you love. We've had a great time bringing it to you. Hope you've really enjoyed it. And don't forget to check out the other things that are available online for the World Science Festival. And thanks to QPAC, our education partner, for helping make all this possible. Hooray, let's go make some mess, yeah? Mm. Okay, see you. Bye. 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 That was so great.